um, this uh, this speaker is one that uh, almost takes no introduction. Carolyn Keating is a longtime Shelley Club member and uh, leader, our lead researcher, um, and does so many nice articles for our magazine. So, Carolyn, the floor is yours. Thank you, Irene. Hi, everybody. Today, I'd like to tell you a story about how Shelly Chintz and Fabric have bound our clubs together. About 23 years ago, Shelly Chintz was on everyone's mind and tongue. Our club had set up an email chat line, thanks to Shelly Santora Jones. There were no smartphones, Facebook and Instagram hadn't been invented, and instant messaging on AOL was a new thing. Our Shelley chat line provided a way for folks to talk about Shelley and to reach large numbers of club members. Anyone who wanted could join and write about whatever Shelley topic that interested them. In 1998 through 2000, the topic most wanted to talk about was chintz. At that time, the Shelley pattern books were owned by Royal Dalton and very few people had access to them. eBay was new and more Shelley patterns were being seen than ever before. But no one really had an idea of how many chintz patterns Shelley had made and on what shapes. The hot topic of conversation on the Shelley chat line was the upcoming book that Kelly Moran was writing on Shelley chintz. Kelly was a member of our club and she wanted to photograph the Shelley china for her book all in one location using the same photographer and lighting and fresh flowers to spruce up the pics. Although Kelly owned some Shelly chins herself, she did not have all the patterns. So she put out a call on the chat line to ask if anyone was willing to ship their Shelly china to her to be photographed for her book. Would you believe that lots of folks were willing? Wow. Yes, she received beautiful and rare Shelly pieces from all over the world and they are memorialized in her book. The book was published in 1999 and provided a wealth of information on chintz patterns that many had never seen. In 2000, our club celebrated its 10th anniversary at our conference in Portland, Oregon. The theme of the conference was chintz and Kelly Moran and Angie Davis, a former club president, gave an upbeat talk on chintz. Each of them wore a chintz outfit and an oversized flowery hat. They were hilarious. Kelly had leftover Maytime chintz lithos that had been given to her by Ray Reynolds, who had saved them from the dumpster at the time of the takeover by Allied English Potteries. Each person attending the conference had the opportunity to make a little souvenir using the Carolyn, Maytime litho. Yes? Uh, we can't see your presentation. The square sheets, the share screen apparently didn't take. Ah, huh. interesting, thank you. Um, I'm going to press escape and try that. Oh, the share screen didn't work. Okay, let me try again. Oh. I'm glad you stopped me. Hi. That's working now. Working now. Okay, I think I'll just go through the slides to catch up to where we are. There's Kelly's book. And that's Angie and, and Kelly at the conference. This is the uh, souvenir that we made at the conference. Okay. In 2001, Woodrow Studios in London licensed from Royal Dalton the right to use Shelley chintz patterns on fabric. Now chintz had come full circle. What had started in India in 1600 on handwoven fabric and had been imported to England and all of Europe from Queen Mary's bedroom decorated in chintz in 1690 to pottery by English manufacturers in the 20th century. Chintz was now again on fabric in the 21st century. But this time it was the exact patterns which Shelley had used on its fine bone china. How extraordinary. 
You can imagine how popular this fabric in many colors became. These are examples of many of the Shelley fabrics that Woodrow Studios made. Some of the fabric colors had never been used by Shelley on their china, like yellow primrose, pink primrose, blue maytime, and pink daisy. Well, we'll come back to that pink primrose later. There were also collages that included some Shelley chintzes and shapes, and some that weren't Shelley, either in pattern or in shape. Most of the patterns had a border of a Shelley teapot or a cup and saucer. For instance, Maytime had a plate, while Primrose chintz featured a teapot. There was a footed oleander cup and saucer on Green Daisy, and a ribbon shape cup and saucer on Rose Pansy Forget-Me-Not chintz. The fabric was sold all over the United States and no doubt in England where it originated and perhaps elsewhere. Collectors made the fabric into every object that could be fashioned from cloth, pillows, aprons, tea cozies, and tote bags. Fast forward to today, this fabric is no longer being made and almost every bit of it has been snatched up. Very rarely, some of it may appear on eBay or Etsy or another online site. At the 2004 NSCC conference in Chicago, conference organizers made raffle prizes from the Shelley chintz fabric. I was lucky enough to be the winner of a beautiful quilted table runner. On the pink side were Maytime, Pink Daisy, and Rose Pansy Forget-Me-Not chintz, along with the pink collage fabric and assorted other fabrics. I love to display some of my pink Shelley chintzes on top. The reverse side of the table runner has the blue collage fabric, which uses blue rose pansy forget-me-not chintz, primrose, melody, and a host of other non-Shelly chintzes and shapes. It looks great with Shelly blue chintz wear. In 2006, for the conference in San Mateo, California, Judy Osborne and her sister Linda Cumming made a gorgeous quilt from the Shelly chintz fabrics and donated it to the club as a fundraiser. That raffle made a lot of money for our club, and one of our club members is the lucky winner of that precious keepsake. I believe she's going to show it to you today at the end of this talk. Mary Dickerson and Shirley Collins made quilted wall hangings for the NSCC conference in Washington, D.C. in 2013. They made extra money for our club as raffle prizes and silent auction items. Again in 2014 for the Warwick, Rhode Island conference, Mary Dickerson made a full-size quilt of Shelley Chintz fabric. It was beautiful. In 2011 for the NSCC Scottsdale, Arizona conference, I made pot holders of Shelley Chintz fabric, one for each attendee. I also took a number of pot holders to England for the 25th anniversary celebration of the Shelley group in that same year. In the years 2012 to 2015, Peter Perrazzo worked to update Kelly Moran's book to show the dozens of additional patterns, shapes, and objects of Shelley Chintz that had been discovered since Kelly's book was published. His Shelley Chintz ebook is published on our club's website and is available in its entirety to all club members. Peter literally combed the world's Shelley collections to find examples of many rare pieces. One very amazing example shown is pink primrose chintz. As the third to the last entry in the pattern books as number 14339 in March 1966, no doubt very few were ever made. Pink primrose was listed against the Boston shape, but here it is on Lincoln. The curious thing about this pattern is that Woodrow Studios had made fabric in the pink colorway in 2001, but few collectors had ever seen an actual cup and saucer in that pattern. This example belongs to Betty Robinson of the Australasian Shelley China Club and is used with her permission. Just this year, I decided to take all the little bits of chintz fabric I had left over and make them into a quilt. It resides alongside my chintz cabinet in our living room, and it prompted me to tell you this story, as well as to show you my chintz collection. As I was stitching it together, it brought to mind all the many people, places, and events that these lovely fabrics have played a part in. It made me want to tell you this story of how simple patterns and cloth can bring people together. 
When I started collecting Shelley Chintz in 1998, I decided to limit my collection to footed oleander with the chintz on the inside of the cup and ribbon with its classic lines and the chintz on the outside. I thought this would give a more uniform look to my collection. Of course, I learned eventually that a great number of Shelley chintzes were made on other shapes, such as Henley, Cambridge, Regent, Ely, Kent, Boston, Lincoln, and others, but I stuck to my guns. Hence, my collection lacks the great variety that's of that shown in Peter's book. And all these next slides are Shelley chintzes from my collection that appeared on the Woodrow Studios fabrics. Maytime is one of my favorites because it's pink, my favorite color. This litho was exclusive to Shelley's and you will not find it on any other manufacturer's wares. Kelly Moran mentions in her book that Maytime is the first Shelley chintz to appear on footed oleander. This is my favorite Maytime piece. It's a basket shaped sweet dish with Maytime around the edge and the Welsh women litho in the center. Along with it is a Maytime decorated knife and they all came in the original Shelley box. Melody is another Shelley chintz exclusive to Shelley's. Peter believes they made more Melody in more types of wear than any other chintz, both on earthenware and bone china. My husband Lyle uses a Melody shaving mug to shave with every day. Primrose chintz is such a happy print. The bright yellow flowers on a background of smaller blue flowers spell spring. The yellow and pink versions on the fabric are nowhere near as pleasing to the eye as the blue and yellow. Blue daisy with its white flowers on a bright blue background appeal to collectors of blue and white. Its cousin green daisy is cheerful and bright. It would look great for St. Patrick's Day. Countryside is the favorite of many chintz lovers. As Kelly says, it features typical wildflowers of the English countryside, hence its name. The soft colors of pink, yellow, blue, green, purple, and rose add variety to any home's decor. Shelley put it on numerous shapes, but I like the footed oleander and ripon the best. Woodrow Studios also made it in a blue and green colorway. Bud floral is known by other names, including simply floral, but here I use the name that Peter used in his ebook. Because it has a neutral background color, the shapes are little bubbles and the flowers are not connected by vines or leaves, this chintz is not as popular with collectors. Woodrow Studios made fabric in this pattern, but it did not have Shelley Ware featured as a border. Perhaps because of its less popular status, small pieces of this fabric can still be found on the internet today. Rose Pansy Forget-Me-Not Chintz was one of the most expensive that Shelley produced. It first appeared in 1937, and because it took five firings to make, the cost was very high. Rose Pansy Forget-Me-Not Chintz was made with four different, color ground, four different ground colors, green and pink shown here, and blue and ivory. It is so beautiful with a gold vine covering the wear, but the brilliance of the gold makes it difficult to get a good picture of it without a reflection. The following slides are Shelley chintzes from my collection that did not appear on fabrics by Woodrow Studios. Rose chintz, a seconds wear pattern and not made on best wear, is very uncommon. There are only a few examples that have ever been seen and never on a shape other than ribbon. It's another one of my favorites and is often confused with the next pattern. This is briar rose chintz or sometimes called low stock chintz. This delicate pattern is so pretty in pink. It's a shame that Woodrow Studios didn't use it on their fabric. I think it would have been very popular. These two patterns were designed by Ray Reynolds using the sheets of bridal rose, or often called rose spray, and Georgian without cutting the individual sprays apart to place sparingly on the wear. Instead, they were placed as they appeared on the litho sheet. The overall effect was that of a chintz. Both of these patterns are hard to find and loved by collectors because Ray designed them. Blue pansy is another pattern that collectors seek. The pansies are in such gorgeous shades of blue and purple and intertwined with soft green leaves and vines that appeal to many. 
Tapestry Rose was made in two colors, yellow and a maroon, which Shelley called red. I've never seen a red tapestry rose on footed oleander. After 20 plus years of looking, I'm inclined to say that Shelley probably did not make it on footed oleander, but a true collector never gives up, right? The reason I tend to think it wasn't made on footed oleander is that Shelley gave a separate pattern number to every other chintz that they made on footed oleander. And there is no separate listing in the pattern books for a footed oleander red tapestry rose. So my guess is it doesn't exist. Summer Glory has beautiful hydrangeas on it. This is the ivory colorway in both of my favorite shapes. Shelley also made a pink colorway that looks more like mauve. On the outside of the footed oleander version, they put S20 mauve, which goes beautifully with the colors inside. Blue Paisley was made in both footed oleander and ripen, and it can be found on the Lincoln shape as well. It was entered into the pattern books in 1960, later than many of the others, and there's less of it available. Green Paisley on the left was entered into the pattern books against the ribbon shape in 1964, several years after Blue Paisley. There's no listing for it against the footed oleander shape, unlike Blue Paisley. Inasmuch as there is no listing for it, and I've never seen it on footed oleander, I tend to think it was never put onto the footed oleander shape. The Paisley shown on the right is a different design and different green color from that used for Green Paisley. It was made using a lithograph by a German company, FX Leopold. We've learned this information from the pattern books, which are now available to us through photographs taken by Chris Davenport. The pattern is seconds wear 2488 on the ribbon shape. Uh, Shelley simply called it Paisley Chintz. Marguerite is for daisy lovers. Its delicate flowers contrast with the larger and bolder daisy seen on blue and green daisy chintzes. The soft greens and yellows are very summery. Daisy is the birth flower for July, so the colors are very appropriate. Rock Garden features bright pinks, blues, greens, and yellows, which contrast against the gray rocks. It reminds me of my mother who had a rock garden in our backyard. This chintz has no number on the bottom. A search through the pattern books reveals a chintz that looks similar to it, number 12755, except the flower used on that chintz is open rose, whereas the one on this cup and saucer is Butcher's Dresden. Whether Shelley later substituted a different flower from the one shown in the pattern books is not known. However, it is a pleasing chintz and uses the same vine pattern on the outside of the wear as Rose Pansy Forget-Me-Not chintz, namely leaf and stem print. The two final chintzes in my cupboard each have a black background. The one on the left is black crackle, sometimes called cloisonne. It has also been seen with a blue background. The one on the right is my pride and joy. It was given to me by Lyle from Mother's Day and I cherish this example of black chintz. One of the rarest of the Shelley chintzes, it was costly to make and may account for its limited availability today. As Kelly Moran explains in her book, the litho uses six colors, each taking one day to print. Because the pink and maroon colors required gold in the oxides, the price of this litho fluctuated daily with the price of gold that day. Both of these factors contributed to the high cost of this pattern. Other companies use the black chintz litho, but collectors rarely see it. I feel very lucky indeed to own this Shelley cup and saucer. When displaying my Shelley chintz, I like to put with it little floral knickknacks in China that has flowers but is not strictly chintz. These are often called chintz go-withs. Here are beautiful Shelley chintz go-withs, my four colors of Holmes Rose in pink, blue, yellow, and green. We found all four cups and saucers at an antique store in San Jose, and much to Lyle's dismay, I had to have all of them. They formed the backdrop for many of my chintz cups and saucers and add to the show. Another way to dress up a chintz display is to add ceramic flowers. On the left are little Staffordshire floral place card holders. I have a couple dozen of them scattered throughout my Shelley cabinets. 
On the right are a Shelley, actually a Royal Dalton posy, and a beautiful white rose by Herond, an anniversary gift of my sister. Of course, if you're lucky enough, you may have some of these Shelley place card holders to spread amongst your chintz. Alas, my collection has none. More chintz go with are these mementos of Shelley conferences. On the left is a Maytime coaster made by Ray Reynolds as favors for the NSCC 2004 conference in Chicago. On the right is a sewing thimble made by Ray for the UK Shelley AGM in 2006. Another Maytime chintz go with is this small butter pat. This one was made by the factory as pattern 12830. One of my favorite chintz go with is this Shelley Girl sign that the Shelley Group made to commemorate their 21st anniversary at their AGM in 2007. I cannot look at this sign without smiling and thinking of Sue Reynolds as she portrayed the Shelley Girl at another UK AGM. The resemblance is amazing. Shelley Chintz jewelry looks great when placed amidst the china. These one of a kind pieces were handmade by dear Shelley friends. Any of these Shelley flower shaped sweet dishes would look great in your chintz cabinet. There are others not shown here. Most date to the 1920s, nearly a hundred years old. Finally, my favorite piece that goes with my chintz is this treasured Shelley sign hand painted by Ray Reynolds. He made it in 2000 and donated it to our club as a silent auction item at our 10th anniversary conference. It has pride of place amidst my Shelley chintz. When I met Ray in 2004 at the Chicago conference, I took the sign with me and asked if he could sign it. He gently explained that if he signed it, it would need to be fired again and that it might be damaged in the firing. Of course, I didn't want that to happen. So I asked if he could sign a photograph of the sign. He graciously did. And that's the signature you see on this slide. My collection is only a small portion of the entire line of chintzes Shelley made. To see the most complete inventory possible, please take a look at Peter's ebook on Shelley Chintz on our club website. Members may view the book in its entirety simply by entering the password. If you don't know the password, please email me at carolynkeating3 at gmail.com and I'll send it to you. It also appears on page two of every NSCC magazine. Peter has done a masterful job, and you won't believe the variety of chintzes available on the Henley, Regent, Cambridge, Boston, Lincoln, Ely, Gainsborough, Kent, and other shapes. I especially want to thank my sister Jane Wood, Peter Perrazzo, Lynn Perrazzo, Chris Davenport, Kelly Moran, Judy Osborne, Linda Cumming, Betty Robinson, and the late Ray Reynolds, so dear to all of us, and my husband Lyle for supporting my Shelley habit. Thank you for listening. I hope lots of you have examples of Shelley chintz to show us, or maybe you have something you've made from Shelley chintz fabric. We'd love to see your treasures. If you have something to share or a question for me, please raise your hand. Donna Gapin is going to help me spot all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Wonderful. I love the shapes that you chose uh, for your collection. The footed oleander and the rip-on make a very nice uh, combination. And the stories are just fabulous. Uh, I know that many people have already raised their hands, so uh, I won't belabor the point, but thank you. What wonderful history uh, to have us enjoy. Uh, I think Rochelle had her hand raised. Oh, I just changed my screen if everybody wants to have a little look at this display of the wall in my tea room. Here we go. Another Shelly chintz lover. But I wanted to show one thing. So, Carolyn, I think the rock garden that you showed had yellow background. Is that right? Oh, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> well, one with the pink background somewhere is where right there. Now, where am I? Where's the Oh, there we go. There's a pink one. That's gorgeous. And then I, there's one with blue. Oh, beautiful. So I just really need a blue pansy one. 
Um, because yeah, that's what I need. <laughs> There's the black one. And some of the pieces you showed from past conferences, fantastic. I didn't drag everything out, but maybe one day you could come visit me and you could oh. have for your next presentation. Lyle and I would love to see your collection. <laughs> Brilliant. Come on up. Thank you, too. That was amazing. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's Ray's plate, right? It is. I just don't want to show my face because I look hideous. I'm getting ready for Halloween or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> Hey, Carolyn, Lynn Smith has a question. She has her hand up. Lynn? She needed to unmute. I have the Judy Osborne, Linda Cummings quilt, and I've laid it out on my dining room table to try and show you the size of it. I have a table for six here, and the quilt doesn't fit on the on the table. It extends out this far. That's gorgeous. And I've laid out some of my my chintz bits along with the patterns. And I'd like you to see if I can get it. The page. The, the uh, signature on the back. I don't know how big you can make that. I can't get it any bigger, but it says the National Shelly China Club Conference, November 2006 in San Mateo. And the quilt was made and donated by Linda Cummings of Castro Valley, California and gives washing instructions like I would dare. <laughs> And then the last thing is at the end of the table, there is a pillowcase in Melody oh. to store it in. Oh. So beautiful and I feel so lucky to have this. Well, Lynn, you are very lucky to have it. It's gorgeous and you've kept it in beautiful condition and I think a lot of us covet it. <laughs> It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Although the one thing that I've got tucked in on the table, excuse me while I move around, is a brand new teapot. The teapot shape, if you can see it, it's globe mostly, but it has a raised rim on, on it. in turquoise. And Betty Pomish found this and let me buy it when I squealed and cried. <laughs> Beautiful. So, thank you. Carolyn, uh -huh. Bruce has a question. Okay. Bruce? Uh, yeah, not a question, just, um, yeah, hi. Um, I'm just gonna say, I have, uh, I'll just show you some, I have some Regents in chintz. Um, I don't know if you can see them there. Oh, they're beautiful. Um, yeah, that um, some of them are actually specials patterns. Um, I know um, these look very similar, but they're actually uh, ones ones a specials pattern. And um, one I have recently, a very which I love actually, is the Melody. Um, oh, sorry, Maytime in the coffee. It's quite a unusual one to find. Yeah. But um, anyway, I just say I, they are in Regent as well. Not as many as Carolyn, unfortunately. Well, they're gorgeous. And uh, Bruce, I don't have a single Regent shaped one. So it's wonderful to see them. Thank you. If you uh, play your cards right, Carolyn, I might send you one. I've got a May time, <laughs> a spare one. In, I'll take it off eBay and I'll send it to you. <laughs> hmm. Be a new, a new habit. Yes, yes, a whole whole new thing to explore. Lyle will be thrilled. <laughs> I can barely wait, uh, Bruce. <laughs> wait till I return the favor. <laughs> the pleasure's mine. The pleasure's all mine. Carolyn, you have a lot of thank yous uh, on the chat page. Oh, thank you, Donna, for pointing that out. I, I, I'll look at all of them. Do you think there's questions? 
No, I don't think there's a question there. Oh, well, Linda Melanchuk, Finn, and I hope it's okay, Linda, that I read this. She says she's wearing a corduroy jacket with country, countryside chins cuffs and collar and a pocket design. Linda, can you speak so we can see your beautiful jacket? Um, I'll try. Oh. Um, this, there's the collar pieces. Wow. There, and then these are the cuffs. D did you make that? I had my cousin is a better seamstress than I, and she made it for me. Oh, it's beautiful. So I provided the, uh, the material and she made it for me. Thank you for showing us that. It's beautiful. I think Lee Clark has raised her hand. Hi, I just wanted to show you that I believe I have one of your, um, what is this, potholder. I got it from Betty Shelley, who might have been at that meeting. I wasn't there. But it's now very special to me because you made it. It's hanging in my kitchen every day. So now I'll think of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful. Just goes to show the impact. As you said, it's uh, wonderful how these sorts of things uh, tie people together with shared interests and shared loves. Do we have any other comments or questions? Donna, help me look because I'm not, I can't see everything. I'm not seeing any. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing any more. If you're asking questions, don't just send it to Carolyn, send it to the whole group because we're all trying to, it's kind of like looking at gnats in a haze here to see hands raised. Donna, oh, no, Donna I have one, a little one, little question. Yes, Donna, go ahead. Oh, sorry. And, um, Unusual oleander um, brown colors for the blue pansy and the paisley. I'm wondering if you could repeat or tell what those numbers were or their names, because I have um, been looking for a saucer to match a cup for a long time. And as you know, the saucers often didn't have the ground color. So how would one even go about searching or what are they called? And it's a mystery to me. I can't read the pattern numbers on mine. Donna, I'll be happy to send you the uh, pattern numbers. Unfortunately, I don't know how to go back to my presentation to grab those right now, but I could send you those. The, the hard thing though with saucers is that Many, many times, Shelly did not put a pattern number on the bottom of the saucer. So, you, you know, the, trying to match a color can be very difficult. Um, you know, if it's a particular shade of blue, because there are so many different um, footed oleander saucers that I've seen in, in various shades of blue, and it would, be, it would be hard. It's almost like you'd have to have the two pieces together. Uh, if there's no number on the bottom of the saucer. So I'll be happy to send you pattern numbers, but um, okay. good luck on that. Uh, I've tried to figure it out looking at Chris Davenport's book and I can't read the little, you know how sometimes they fade. So yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Any last things for the cause? Otherwise, <laughs> I don't, anyone with something else to say or ask? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Hi, this is Elizabeth in Massachusetts. Oh. Um, I have a, a lovely apron. You're going to have trouble seeing it. It's beautiful. It's some daylight. Um, but this was, I guess it's May time. Mm -hmm. And I do have uh, chintz. They're still packed in the barn, but we're moving into our house and we will unpack it. But this apron was made by... Um, Bernice Perrazzo. Oh. So she did a beautiful job on this and I got it from her um, as a gift. I think either that or I won it at the Warwick, Rhode Island event. Now I'm having trouble remembering, but she made it. So that was quite a nice project for her to use the fabric for. 
thank you so much for showing that to me. I did not have a picture of that. I, I have a lot of photos in my collection from previous conferences, but didn't have that one. Thank you so much. It's gorgeous. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, the I last thing from Andrew. Huh? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I don't, don't think we see it off. I'll just quickly share if that's all right. I have a, an, an, I don't have that much uh, chintz, but I've got um, a melody in a Essex, which is a, an earthenware as opposed to a china. So um, yeah, I, I quite like that little set. Beautiful. Uh, T for two. And some cake plates there. Uh, yeah, I've got a few different cake plates, maybe about 50. Who knows? It's, uh, <laughs> they, they grow like every other thing in, in Shelley. Carol, you didn't say anything about miniatures. We have a few miniatures. Do you know what the range of use of chintz was in miniatures? Frank, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite understand the whole question. Could you repeat it? Uh, are we, we have a few miniatures in chintz. And I wondered what the range of miniatures were that, that used the chintz. You know, I am not an expert on miniatures at all. And uh, Ron Hoffman has a whole thing on our, our club website that shows uh, as many as he's been able to collect. And uh, I think that would be a good source to look, look at that. Um, if you go to our website, look for Ron Hoffman's uh, uh, the tab on uh, miniatures and, and in that you'll find his what chintz is he's found and he's one of the uh, preeminent uh, miniature collectors of Shelley uh, throughout the world. I know there's a few in Australia that may rival his but uh, what he has on the website I think is pretty much what's known. So that's about all I could say to answer your question. <laughs> 